All right. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another one of the uh, the Weird Wednesday streams. <laughs> uh, I am Ashley. For all of those watching on uh, the VOD on YouTube, and I'm a character and creature concept artist. So, and sculptor, character artist in general, all of the above. Um, so, basically, during these sessions, what I'm going to be doing is smashing a ball. Professional ball smashing. No, <laughs> we're just going to be mashing this around, finding some uh, fun shapes to kind of springboard our design process from. Um, it's kind of like cloud watching in a sense, but you're the one making the weird shapes in the first place. You just don't think about it too much, and then you kind of go from there. It's a more of a freeing artistic approach to things rather than a technical one. So if you're looking for more of a technical, um, specific pipeline or production-based way of sculpting and implementing it into a production for film or, you know, uh, games or even 3D printing, I would recommend all of the other artists that stream on this channel. But for me, I treat this as like a sketchbook session. So it's one of those things where I would say don't expect anything too technical to come from this, more of experimenting and having fun and just learning to enjoy the process of sculpting um, and not worrying about any kind of like artifacts that show up because we're going to be doing Dynamesh then using those artifacts to our advantage as well. So if that's your thing, welcome. <laughs> if not, there's a whole lot of other artists on ZBrush Live and I really recommend, highly recommend you check out their workflows because if mine does not work for you, surely somebody else in that giant roster of talented artists Somebody will. Somebody's somebody's workflow will. So that said, we're probably gonna get started. Hello, Shader. Hi, Baubles. What's up? How how's it going? How's it going? I have been personally pretty tired, but hopefully, uh, just doing a bunch of random, random whatever <laughs> is going to actually wake me up because it is a lot of fun. Hey, Reaper. Hey Charlie, push me, pull me, bop me. What is that? Like the the bop it thing from the nineties? <laughs> I don't even remember how it goes. It's very like weird. I never had one. Friend did. It was very annoying. All right. Hey Leonard. Fun and relaxation. Exactly. Oh god, this thing. Hold on. The one thing about uh, <laughs> using a Cintiq or even a tablet, I can't wear bracelets or watches or anything on this arm. It has to be naked, bare, ready, <laughs> greased up, oiled up. Okay. Let's do some random, random stuff. I like to use uh, masking as well to kind of figure some stuff out right off the bat. I don't really, again, like I don't really care about very much of uh, what it is specifically or precisely that I'm doing. I'm just kind of pulling out and moving around some shapes, seeing if I can get anything interesting. Nothing in mind, no concepts are up. We're just having fun here. And I'm looking for big swooping lines and shapes. Nothing in particular, just mask, mask, pull, move, mask, mask. All right, already we're doing dragon. We're doing dragon, it looks like, or something dragon-esque. I'm telling you, an entire sculpt can be achieved. <laughs> it can be achieved with just mask and snake hook. That's all you need. And I, I challenge, I want a challenge where a bunch of the other, um, a bunch of the other uh, ZBrush artists on ZBrush Live, we all do something where I can just dictate the rules like that, where it's just like, okay, everybody, only mask, only snake hook, no other tools. And just see where it goes, just see what happens. I want to, I want to do that. I want to do that so bad. That'd be so much fun. 
Hey, Rethan, how are you doing? Hey, Alexis. Rashawn. You're using a back on backup Intuos M. I'm gonna save for a Wacom this time. Yeah, the Intuos are. I actually really enjoy using the win Intuos. The only thing is, um, with the latest Windows update, I for whatever reason cannot get. Uh, I cannot get my Intuos to work with my Cintiq at the same time. It's getting all weird. But normally before that, I was able to. So. That, those were the glory days, honestly. I like to put AccuCurve on, uh, on my snake hook as well, because it gives really like sharp, clean angles. Kinda. Thinking maybe we do a little bit of like a wacky bird like body or something. Maybe. Yo, that emote. I, I keep forgetting that I have that emote shader. Like, I actually totally forget that I have it. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm actually wondering if maybe there would be a better way to represent Snake Hook. Then I'm like, oh, well, you can always just use the actual, like, brush thing, but like, that would be boring. Not really, it's not that boring. think to do because normally we do things with like a pretty uh, a pretty like ominous like punched appearance so I'm gonna do something a little bit more proud Yo, what's up, Lil? How's it going? Hello, Hamza. When you die in a mesh, it all- wait, all close polygons are merged. Is there a way you can stop it? Um, you can- first, you can try doing something at a higher resolution. However, if two parts of your mesh are either intersecting or touching, directly touching, the only way that you can get around that is by doing a Z remesh and then uh, reprojecting details at a higher subdivision level. Because if you are dynameshing, it's taking anything that's close and, and combining it together. AccuCurve. AccuCurve is something that you can get in your brush menu. You scroll to Curve right here. This is AccuCurve. This is where you can find it. So I put that on my stick hook, or if you're using the move brush, your move brush, because when you pull using it, it goes to a straight point. So this is really good for very like, very like straight kind of silhouette, like creating straight silhouettes. It's also really good for hard surface things. I use it a lot for moving around hard surface parts. Um, if you take AccuCurve off, then you can see it's very blobby, put it back on, now it's pointy, right? So that's the difference. What's this character? No clue. We're just mashing stuff around. <laughs> Looking kind of like like a dragon thing though, so probably going to go with that. Dragons are always fun. So I have a feeling it's gonna get into like, well, you know, maybe slightly weirder territory than just 
specifically. Dragon. What's up, what's up uh, Kevlar and Iro? How are you doing? The A cube zoo. Yeah, the amount of um, <laughs> rough sculpts that I have just specifically from uh, this, these streams alone is actually kind of funny. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. Let's do some rings. Woo! Because I feel like it. Speaking of rings, who's finished Elden Ring? I did. I finished Elden Ring. I even clapped Melania's cheeks. Been a while since you saw a stream come up. Well, hello, welcome. It is me, the tired girl. I am here to fulfill your needs to get the yawn out because I'm sure at some point I will trigger one. I don't really know what I'm doing with this. Just kind of creating some sort of a shape here. Let's see. We take this. Okay. What's up, Pepe? Hi, Dave. Hello, hello. Oh, you use it every time somebody s mentions snake hook? That's awesome. <laughs> I'm actually surprised you used that one. I'm glad that you like it though, that's good. I really do want a challenge where everyone's only using snake hook and masking. I I, I want to do it. I want I want I want a challenge. I think it would be so much fun. If you want a challenge like that, make sure to tell people that you want that that challenge. And then we can just do an entire like stream thing where it's just a bunch of us artists struggling together. I love that. I love I love struggling with people, you know. Do, 
Pepe just gave me an idea for what kind of a dragon. Wait, what's that? What Pepe? What, what like <laughs> a Zed dragon? Hey, now I'm gonna just give it a little bit of I am um... <laughs> You know what's funny is I never use any of my own like I am M stuff or anything like that on these streams. I always just go pure vanilla. This is pure vanilla. I think that makes it more fun on these streams, honestly. If I were to just like use my own kit bash stuff, like it would have been I think things would be done way too quickly. <laughs> Just do it! A skunk dragon. Skunk dragon? I mean, maybe like the black and white kind of thing, but then maybe it would look more like yin yang dragon than anything. I really like the idea of like a what is it called like zydodactyl or lycodactyl um the, where basically it's like your your hand is like split down here and you've got two and two on two sides but you're not doing like live long and process, prosper it's an actual like bone thing for the animal it's something dactyl I can't remember what it's called I'm bad at that yo what's up glyph Excessive amount of limbs again? I don't know. Do you do you want to do excessive amount of limbs? You sound almost disappointed in the uh, the prospect of having an excessive amount of limbs. Let's see why you would be. I feel like that would be an exciting thing, no? More limbs, more happy. I really want to like break these hands, man. I won't break them. I won't break them. Bust them up real good. I think one of my favorite things, I know this looks like absolute butthole doo-doo right now, but one of my favorite things is to just do like hand-like gestures 
Um, or just like alien hands, like hands, feet. I really like gesturing. It's a lot of fun. Even just taking mannequins and uh and kind of creating some sort of a some sort of like a gesture with that something to indicate motion if i had more patience with myself too and i could stay interested in a project long enough i would really like to get back into animation but that's my that's my big, big problem is staying interested enough in my own uh my own projects to actually see it through the rigging process into animation is just uh eats a something Get that in there. Get in there. Cut that hand in half. Why not? Why not? We're in ZBrush. We can do anything. We have superpowers to make anything that we want to. Cut the hand in half. I talking about Ectrodactyl. Uh. Let's see. I'm gonna go... Let's see. No, Zygodactyl is, uh, for, like, so... Um, there's a bunch of- yeah, okay, so there's a bunch of them. There is, uh... Zygodactyl, there's Tridactyl, there's Didactyl. It's basically just like <laughs> the fingers are going in different directions. A so Zygodactyl is two in the front, two in the back, like like an X, like that. Even birds like feet like that. Uh, in Inisodactyl, is that how you say that? It would be like the two in front, one in the back, like that. You think we're living in the Matrix? I think it's a good possibility. <laughs> I think anything's like possible. I honestly think this world is this life is a joke. It's a cruel joke. <laughs> Some tentacles. I read that wrong. Okay. Some tentacles come out from the dap gap between the fingers there. Yeah, we'll see. We gotta play with like uh, proportions here and make it actually like interesting. Right now, very humanoid. Me no likey. I mean, we can still have like humanness, hu humanoid, but I don't like how it's just right out of the box, you know? Delete that. Get in there. Hide my sins. Nobody can see them. You didn't see anything. You didn't see how disgusting all of this is. There we go.
I still uh, remember my first job that I had um, when I was doing uh, character retop, uh, like as a junior, I was asking about retopology of like the ear or like how do I fix um, some of like the issues I was having, uh, reconnecting like the face with the the amount of loops on the head, like the scalp. And I still remember just a random random thought. My my lead was just like just hide all your sins behind the ear. <laughs> <laughs> that mentality has carried forth. Just hide it behind the ear. Hide your sins. What drawing tablet do I use? I use a, um, a, uh, oh my god. <laughs> Rain, please. A Cintiq 22 HD. Do I work for a company or freelance? I am a freelance artist who works for studios, so studios hire me to do whatever the heck they want. I don't know, clean their dishes or some nonsense, and uh, then I get paid. No, I'm just kidding. I I do artwork for them. A lot of the time I'm doing like freebiz. Sculpting, freebiz, you know. Uh actually a lot of paint overs too recently. I've been made, like not paint like paint over paint overs, but like illustration work. I use ZBrush to uh for a base for illustration as well. And believe it or not, most of my work is in cartoons. I am a uh, mostly professional stylized artist. Oh. But here, I like to have fun, let loose, cry her cold on with the boys, and creature sculpt. I do not like this song. I wish to get it out of here. Thank you. Who would have thought? I know, it's weird, right? Strange. So strange. Uh, let's see. The Black Knife Assassin sculpt you posted on Twitter is a- Thank you, Glyph. <laughs> I'm actually surprised people like picked up on that because it's just like a little gestural block out. I haven't even really done any armor or anything, but people know it's just it's that move. That specific move. I don't know, it gets me. I like it. I really like it. Every time I see a black knife assassin, I get all butterflies and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna stab me. <laughs> Over the past few days I've been reminded how much I don't like Blender while trying to use it to render out images for model references. You're dreading the day you'll be forced to switch to it because of no other options. You really think you're going to be forced to switch to it, though? Like, think think about all of the innovation that keeps happening. Like, even... <laughs> like, I don't think you're going to have to switch to anything if you don't want to. I don't... Unless, like, you're, you literally have no money at all, and you can't get your hands on another program, then... Alright, but... I don't think you're going to have to use it. If you don't want to, anyways. Have I played Silent Hill? Yeah. Yeah, not all of them though, not the recent ones. Um... <laughs> how much do they charge you an hour? Oh, do you, how much do I charge them an hour? It ranges. 
It ranges depending on uh, depending on studio and depending on project. I don't like to publicly say a very specific amount because I know that a lot of clients watch this as well. And if like a client were to hear a certain number and then come to me and say that number, it could be an incorrect quote for the type of work that they're asking, either higher or lower. So that's mostly like, so it is kind of like an up in the air. Um, I've had projects that are in the hundreds of dollars an hour. If you were to break it up, there's certain things that you put together and create a weekly rate or a monthly or full project rate, depending on what it is that you're doing, right? And so that's why I don't really like to say specific, specific numbers, but I can tell you that things have ranged into the, uh, the hundred dollar range. Because I know that you're, you're looking for, oh, what's the highest you've ever, you know? <laughs> After sculpting, what would be the next step to getting the model ready for rigging and animation? Um, the, uh, the next step after sculpting is, you know, obviously this is, this is like super, super early, but you'd want to clean up your sculpt, right? And then you want to retopologize it. So after you retopologize, what retopology is, is drawing on, um, cleaner topology, right? You know what topology is, it's all of this. So making sure that your um, your edge loops are all following the right areas for proper deformation, etc. And then you can start to what people call baking. You take the higher resolution mesh and bake normal information, normal map information down onto your character. I forgot a step. Before that, you're supposed to UV your character and then you can start baking it, put all your um, information from the high resolution sculpt down to the low resolution sculpt, and then you send it uh, to get textured. And you can do texturing in the same vein as uh, rigging and animating if you want to, because your main parts that rigging and animation will need are already done, so you can actually overlap texturing with that. You can skip texturing, leave it to the end if you really, really want to. I don't recommend that. But if you wanted to, you could always overlap these things. However, the um, the base that you need is that low res being uh, baked in. <laughs> and peppered the entire city of Virginia with giant slay drink. <laughs> I didn't use that. I didn't use... Dude, the first time I came across one of those, I was actually so confused because I I didn't understand. I, it was in the Ill illusion cave. Is the first time I came across one of those. <laughs> I, was, I was just I was I didn't know what was going on, but I just kept watching the animation, going like, "Hmm, kind of like this." <laughs> eventually, eventually, I was able to do it because um, I beat Elden Ring with an S stock in a dream. <laughs> I didn't use any other weapon. I used an S stock for the whole game. I was just poking things. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why I did that to myself, but anyways, uh, I I for that specific cave because I didn't know what the frig was going on. I had the uh, the poison poison. What are they called? The poison plant poison pustule things that like spray poison everywhere. I put those in the middle, right? I summoned them in the middle so that every single time I saw it being attacked, I could start poking that <laughs> Suffice to say, I won. <laughs> that was brutal though. I didn't- because <laughs> I didn't know you had- there was a flame or anything like that. Yeah, the land squirts. Great name. Great name. A plus name. Perfect name. <laughs> You have no idea what steps to take to try and 
animate your model so thanks for the info yep everybody got, so what rod said above too just keep that in mind and if you have any issues along the pipeline you could always um google very specific parts of it as well so after your sculpt you can just do like google something like uh you know high res mesh to low res retopology or character topology flip normals has some good information on that as well they have uh like good rundowns on it danny mac has um a very basic like uh character retopology thing on his youtube i think as well sculpting in the Mat matcap red wax color flip normals does not recommend it your opinion ah ha, ha, you have found the most contested like most controversial thing in ZBrush community. <laughs> red wax or not to red wax, as you can see, I'd choose no red wax. I'm going to commit a cardinal sin here and turn this into red wax. All right. So the reason why I say no red wax, one, it burns your retinas. It makes you um, gain 300 pounds and break 10 legs. So that's already a negative. But besides that, <laughs> besides that, if you can see, let's see uh, if I can grab this. Now this is, oops, hello? What's going on? Frame, thank you. Okay, so if you can see here, I'm gonna push this up a bit more and I'm going to take a Damien standard and I'm going to just cut in here. Now, what does the deepest most part of this mesh, what color is that? It's white, right? So it's basically creating a white to all of your cavities, which when you're first starting to sculpt can be very, very confusing to your eye, even if you think it's not. If you've ever sculpted in red wax and thought it looked really good and then switched to another material and you're like, ew, what is going on that's because your brain is not really used to this cavity is white idea the cavity should be black or not black but it should be shaded right like let's say we just go over to the the uh the mat cap we're getting the actual lighting affecting here artificially though everything looks brighter in the uh the red wax so that kind of messes things up a little bit it's it's not the worst thing in the world there is more of like a meme -y aspect to it if you really want to use it fine but just be sure to check in other materials as well because it is misleading in some senses when i first started i was also very misled you know um it can give you a false sense of how deep you're going uh with your 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 cuts and your forms as well just because of the type of contrast that's happening even you see like this like this like cut off here that happens as well it's it can be a little bit weird um some people use it actually to see how messy their sculpt is right because you can actually see um detailing a lot more intense like let's say i were to grab the standard tool and just kind of do this and then go over this or whatever and i tried to smooth that out so this is looking real lumpy you slip switch to something else it might not look as bad right so you can see 100 percent if you've got like a, a messy sculpt in an area too with red wax it might help you see things better however really don't super recommend it just because of it can it it can it can be bad to measure depths is what i'm trying to say because when you're when you're sculpting you really want to be looking at highlights specifically um when something hits like a high point and a low point so you're looking at for these uh these highlights right here to kind of dictate where you're cutting in etc maybe if you're not directly thinking about it but subconsciously you're picking up on all of this stuff switch over to red wax and it's like, well, where did that highlight go, right? Now it's down here. So it can be very difficult to get a real gauge on where it is that uh, that you're going with uh, your sculpt. 
so that's why. Yeah, red red wax has similar qualities as gluten. It's true. It's true. It does. It does have red wax intolerance, so. Is there a way to draw on all sub tools in a folder so you don't have to merge them? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. So it's a temporary merge. Okay. So if you use transpose master, you T pose your mesh, it sends everything into one sub tool. Yes, things are merged together, but now you can move everything together. Together. The power of the gods. Together. Anyways. Um, You'll merge everything together and you'll make some like adjustments, right? And then you can just click here, T post to sub T, it'll switch back. Now everything is in its own sub tool again and your changes have been applied. How would a client get to reach you through email? My favorite ZBrush teacher. Oh, <laughs> Quick question. In one of your tutorials, you made your brush size bigger than a thousand. How'd you do that? Mine stops at a thousand. Um, so if you click on spacebar, you can double click on dynamic. Uh, you're saying that yours stops here. You might have better time adjusting this. Maybe it has something to do with your document size or your screen size. I'm not 100% sure about that. However, if you're having issues with your brush, um, being too small for whatever reason, then this is, this is your answer right here. Just double click on dynamic and, uh, you can get it to go whoosh. One of the sculptors you work with is colorblind and had no idea he was working in red wax. I mean, it still would affect his ability to see the highlights, though it doesn't really matter necessarily the color. It's just how the highlights affect the material. So <laughs> still get him to switch, man. Unless he's like trained himself specifically to see that, which you can do. I just feel like if you're, if you're deciding whether you should or not, I say don't. <laughs> Together, we will devour the very gold. Together, <laughs> so. yo. Well, you're in the right club, man. Uh, snake hook is the way to go. Snake hook is the shiz. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanna ditch this right now, and I wanna just like keep working on my assassin. Just the draw size preferences draw see i've never done that personally so you're teaching me right now you're saying draw ah max brush size there it is leonard coming in here with the big big brain so under draw like leonard said you can get your max brush size all the way i'll chunk it all the way up there man it's like what's the point what's the point in keeping it lower just, just shove it to the moon my assassin? I could just load my assassin. The 
this is all I did on it, man. I want, I want to keep going. <laughs> Swoosh. Swoosh. When it comes to working practically, do you actually use the new ZBrush tools features that keep coming, or do you realistically only stick with a small subset of tools, snake, etc.? Sometimes, yes, I... So, the new tools that come, um, a lot of the time, it's like, they're used very specifically for specific things. Even... Even Sculptress Pro, I use it in very specific situations, because I have a workflow that works for me, um, and it's... You know, anything that speeds things up, I will use, but if it's not super practical, then I I probably won't. However, keep in mind too that um, new features coming to ZBrush is not necessarily just for character artists, right? Like there's so many other uh, professions that are involved with using ZBrush that it's kind of like, oh, well, maybe something like, you know, the, uh, the bas ba ba relief, is that what it's called? Maybe I don't use that a whole bunch. Perhaps for like armors and things I would, but that's more for like people who are doing jewelry and coin stamping and things like that, right? Um, there's a lot of different things that come into play for 3D printing and even marketing and package creation, etc. Like there's a lot of different stuff that, that, uh, that comes through that wouldn't necessarily be for my workflow, right? So it just, it, it's really a depends case by case thing. I wouldn't say that every single thing that comes through the gate, I'm like, hell yeah, that's something I'm gonna use because it's not, but not everything is for me, so. Oh yeah, 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 I see, we. <laughs> Yo, she got him good. This dude, this, I, so I, I usually, <laughs> my character, um, I played with a pot on my head the whole game, so I'm just kind of doing something else, like, you know, just, okay, I don't really want to put a pot there. <laughs> That's why you see a bunch of dead confessor bodies all over the world in Elden Ring. He's a flame. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 they're not dudes. Yo, the, um, no, that's, that's good. So these, uh... The Black Knife Assassins are all women. They're all ladies. All very large, tall, strong, cool ladies. I like them a lot. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, it's my character. It it's my character, but with a helmet that I wasn't wearing because I don't want to put like, um, I don't, I was just wearing scale armor and a pot for the whole game. <laughs> I, just, I had a, <laughs> like I have so many armor sets. I even have like the, the, um, what it, what's it called? The, the knight. Knights. What are they? What are they called? The Black Knights. Uh, the ones that ride the horses. The dead. Go ahead. Nighttime. Anyways, yeah, I have their armor too, and it's really cool. But then I just decided to just keep wearing scale armor. Scale armor and the pot with an S stock and a dream, baby. <laughs> nice cavalry. Thank you. My God, my brain. What builds were you guys using? I know a lot of people were, are just like spamming bleed right now, and I'm just like, mm. not heal. <laughs> Yo, that fight too. Oh my god, so funny. I literally just out healed it. I didn't know that there was um, a specific like Estus thing that you could get, like flask thing to negate his stupid like nigh heal thing that he was doing. I had no idea, so I just like out healed it. I was like chugging pots. Like, <laughs> oh, the gold mask outfit and Alvernic helmet. <laughs> Bear. I I would I didn't do gold masks quest though, unfortunately. Also, I feel ashamed. I don't. I mean, maybe I shouldn't. I'm not gonna like spoil anything, but I chose. I chose like a. 
I chose the worst ending. <laughs> I don't know why I chose it. You can probably guess which ending I chose just by saying that. God damn. <laughs> Big poo poo ending. <laughs> With the bug wing, yo, the the wing, dude, Estelle, Estelle was the coolest. Estelle was the coolest thing. Int strength. Oh, that's interesting. Usually people go int dex, right? Yeah, scale armor is. I actually really like the way that the scale armor looks too. I felt so guilty getting it though. I was like, is this really what it comes to? Dude, that dude was just vibing, man. <laughs> no, I didn't get the f no, 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 not frenzy. I didn't do frenzy. I got the poo poo. In it. <laughs> big, big poo poo in it. Oh, is this the uh? Ah, my bad. I'm gonna delete this. I was working on the T pose the entire time, like a dum dum. Where'd my other one go? Oh, okay, sorry, I'm not. Yeah, I, um, it doesn't. It doesn't help that I. I know. I understand that I like talk and like weird inflections and things. I apologize. I apologize. I get carried away and then I just talk like I do with like my friends on here. I get a little bit weird. Sorry. Was the oldest console that I played on? Um, I guess like the Nintendo 64. I had the Pikachu foot one. But did unless the PS1 did the PS1 come out before that? No, I think the Nintendo 64 was before PS1, right? I had the Pikachu foot one. You know the Pikachu Nintendo 64? Press the, press the Pikachu foot and then it reset. I don't know. Hello, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. During sculpting something like a hand, when you dynamesh it, the fingers stick together. What should you do in order to prevent it from sticking? Um, so I would say if you're doing something like uh, you're so if if you're in T pose and your fingers like this are dynameshing together, then you just need to dynamesh at a higher resolution. If your fingers like this are dynameshing together, there's no way around that other than control D, okay? So you'd have to just add subdivisions in order to add uh, resolution. Or this way is a little bit on the um, messy side. So if you wanted to, but you also have to keep in mind you're going to really chunk up your resolution pretty fast by doing this, you can turn on um, you can turn on Sculptress Pro Mode, okay? And then you can start to work on top of that, and they will remain separate. They will remain separate by doing that. Just keep in mind too, though, uh, if you're if you're working this way, um, you can't put on any back face masking. But what you can do, if you just want to add the, the resolution, but keep the shape, because that's usually what I do, um, I will just take the uh, shift button with Sculptures Pro mode on, turn the Z intensity down to zero, and then just tap these areas and give them resolution. But now they're not merged together and you can keep sculpting on top. So you can change that resolution as well. 
you can make the subdivided size uh, smaller. That was a little bit too much. And then when you do that, now you can see you're getting a lot of resolution in there, but because it goes up so fast, now watch this, right? You see how low res these hands are? Look at, look at my active points, right? Goes right up to 350,000 just in one click. So that's why I'm telling you be very careful when you're using this. Increment slowly so you can see where your topology is going. Otherwise, kablooey, you know what I mean? But it is a tool that you can use if you're, um, if you're kind of like tight. However, I would recommend doing things in T-Pose, getting all your uh, information in T-Pose with your fingers like this before you start posing them around, unless you like to just do gestural things, in which case it doesn't matter if the fingers merge together because you're just doing something gestural and for fun anyways. But if you're having the issues with Dynamesh merging things together and you're in T-Pose, up your Dynamesh resolution, first and try and do it that way and then start working with subdivision levels after that that is the clean and proper way of doing things unless you're sculpting or unless like you're more um intermediate knowledge with like knowing how things are going to react i don't recommend what i just showed you it's something that i do personally so i'm putting it on the table there but i don't recommend that especially when you're first starting if you're having issues Make sure to keep things in T-Pose. Make sure your fingers are separated enough so that when you're using a high enough resolution in Dynamesh, they don't merge together. Thanks, Logan. Uh, how do you know the placement of your clavicle before going into the shoulder deltoid if you're placing them wrong? So I've got one of these handy dandy naked boys. Look at that. Look at that naked guy right there. Nice and naked. So he's got a very very easy to read clavicle um right there out in the open so the big thing that you want to keep in mind right is when you <laughs> my favorite thing is to just look in the mirror if i'm like really confused okay that's something that i do i look in the mirror but you can see the connecting points you've got the beginning of your clavicle right here it's like these two little bony bits okay and these connect to, I can't remember the muscle names, I'm very bad at that, but you have a ligament that attaches all the way to behind your jaw, and it comes down like this. So no matter where you turn, always remember that there is a line from here to the back of your jaw, right? So that's your first connection point, that's your first like big thing to remember. And then when it comes to the deltoid, there's a little box, okay? There's a little box that happens right here where everything kind of connects. And you can kind of feel it on your arm as well if you lift it up, if you lift your arm up and then right, right where your deltoid meets your, um, I guess like the top of your shoulder, you can feel kind of like this, this divot that happens, this box, that's, that's the box, the end part of your clavicle, the outermost part of your clavicle. And that box, right? That box is where everything connects. Okay, so your clavicle runs directly underneath there. This is the deltoid sitting two thirds in. And then right here, you've got your trapezius and that hits right on top of your deltoid um, box. I can't remember the exact name for that, but I just call it the deltoid box or the deltoid box. Okay. And then you've got your um, your pectorals, and that actually falls off directly from right here. It all attaches to your um, bony bit near your neck, right here, right. And then that comes off the top part, and then the bottom one, the pectoralis major will actually attach from the center point of your chest. So your sternum. Again, I, I apologize for my lack of ability to remember the exact names, but yes. Okay. Yeah, the bony, the bony thing, the sticky out bitty thing. I'm really bad with names. I'm very, I'm a very forgetful, forgetful person. I hold on to concepts and um, visuals pretty well, but when it comes to 
words, language, anything to do with that, it's a it's a struggle for me. Always has been. So I apologize. Just because you don't know the names of something does not necessarily mean you do not understand it. Everybody learns differently. Don't ever beat yourself up if somebody tries to gatekeep anatomy from you because you don't know all the names of something, but you do know how they connect. Whatever. You're not you're not a doctor, you're an artist, okay? You don't need that. The sternocleidomastoid. Yeah, that's the, uh... Yes. <laughs> Remembering names to flex. It, it's, uh... I mean, I'm not gonna say that people who know the names don't know what they're talking about. A lot of people who know anatomy names are actually very, very, very good at uh, anatomy. But what I can say is that sometimes... Sometimes, um... A little bit of toxicity can be there. For sure. How do I approach a tucked or folded inwards clothing, like a sleeve that's being pulled up? Um, well, it really depends, right? Like, if you want it really realistic, I would do that in Marvelous, to be honest with you. Like, if it was for production, you wanted to make sure that it was nice and clean, and like a clean, like, fold, do something really fast, I would do it in Marvelous. However, if we're talking about something that's more like, you know, we're just doing it for look dev or whatever the heck and you want to do it really like messy and quick and gestural, a lot of the times, like, I'll just like grab a cylinder. Like, let's say we have like a, let, let me, let me, let me, let me grab, you know what? This guy's gonna, this guy's gonna wear a sleeve. He's gonna wear a sleeve. Okay. We're gonna have like a, you know, let's just do it right here. Okay. And so I would grab um, my lasso, peel off like the two ends right here. Uh, doesn't matter how messy it is, really. And then I'll delete hidden and I will then move that out as a single piece of geometry. Okay, and then let's say we wanted um, this part to be rolled up. Yeah, you can just like attach things after the fact as well. So if you wanted to smooth out the edge of something as well, you can go into smooth and then smooth cloth, which is the same as going into your brush menu. Going down into smooth brush mod modifiers and then changing the minimum connections down to like zero basically or one uh one rather so that's basically going to allow you to smooth anything on like a border um so if you wanted to do this clean obviously you wouldn't do it this way but if you want to do it really nice and dirty and quick this is how i usually do it so grab that and then if i wanted to roll this push it up to where i want it duplicate that bigger like this Okay, let's give it like a cuff right here and then I can just kind of quickly do a little bit of moving around, do this, give it a dynamash so that it's nice and close there, take this part right here, 
Again, this is just for like quick gestural look Devi type things. It's not how I would do it if I wanted to keep it clean. If I wanted to keep it clean, then I would actually attach the two points seriously and not bake it like this. But if you're just doing like a quick sculpt, it does not matter. Okay, and then you would do something like this. Okay, and whatever, it doesn't matter. Then, and then on this one, make sure that that is nice. He's got a nice, nice curve. Um, and then you can just kind of give it more sub Ds, push that one in. And from there, whoops, I guess I accidentally pulled that at some point, but you get the idea. Um, and then you can just start doing some fold details on top of there. And then always there's, just cause like you're folding some, um, you know, sleeve does not mean that it would not have, uh, wrinkles on this part as well. Never forget that too. So that's, that's essentially how I would do that really, really quickly. That's really messy, but hopefully you get the idea of that. Um, anywhere that I would have a whole bunch of folds, I would just sculpt it in, like so. But yeah, if I wanted it to be like super realistic, wanted to do it really, really fast, then I would probably do it through Marvelous. But anytime there's like a collar or um, like an extra part where you flip it over itself, instead of like struggling with it, I usually just add another piece. But another thing that you can do is there's like the cleaner version. Cleaner version is just okay, taking this, like that, like that, really hidden, right? And then taking this one, putting it over top, and then you can do double. And then from here, you can go and grab um, Z Modeler. And then you can start to bridge these. So grab here, bridge, edges. Okay, you're gonna wanna like do this and then flip it first. So you would have to grab, hold on. Auto group, split that off. Like flip it real quick. And then merge it down. And then you can say double. You can see what you're doing. Now you can bridge them. And just kind of like do that for the entire thing. Um, I'm pretty sure it says like you can do two holes. Not gonna go through and do all of it but like you get the idea and then that means when you do go control d it's an actual like flip here and you can add you know non-artificial uh inflation here as well right and then because it's all one-sided geometry you can actually create more um you go into dynamic, right? And then you can actually give it like a, a thickness as well. You do it this way, right? So that's the clean way of doing it. And then, you know, you can sculpt on top of that, or whatever. But for, for gestural stuff, this is usually not what I do because this is, I just like being really messy and quick and stuff. And I'm usually one to move things around. So this would come at like a later stage for me when I'm cleaning up clothing. If, if it's just specifically in ZBrush alone. The bone sticking out thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a genius when it comes to that stuff. Like I'm really bad with talking a lot of the time. You guys see me all the time. Like I, if I'm really passionate about something and really focused on it, the words will flow like. 
really well. Um, however, if, if not, if I'm having a billion other thoughts at once, <laughs> then I usually pause and I forget what it is that I'm even trying to say and then I forget things really quickly and my mind's already on to another thing so you know if you're like that too there's nothing wrong with it it's just the way that you are I mean like you don't have to try and appease people who call you stupid all the time like I, I get called stupid quite a lot but it is what it is you know when 10 hours of tutorials didn't help? I mean, well, it's because you're asking very direct questions, right? Like a lot of the time you just need to, you need a very specific thing answered. Instead, it's hard to like skim through a bunch of tutorials of things you've already, you already know specifically. I know I've been there like a hundred times, hundred million times. When I was like first learning stuff, I was like, I just, dude, when I first was learning um, 3D, just in general, just trying to get my head around like how to even retopologize something for whatever reason i couldn't get it to click like i didn't understand what baking was for the longest time when i would like before i got my first job i was like i just i don't get it like what do you mean baking like what is a high res what is a low res what's the difference how do you just have the details from the high res onto the low res it makes no sense like i was very confused by a lot of that stuff so it's like these very specific questions when somebody can just like sit down and be like a, B, C, D, right? Then you're like, oh yeah, okay, that does make sense. Instead of going through a tutorial where they're just like, okay, do this and do that and do that. And you're like, right? So it's like certain things you get stuck on because you don't, it's not like a normal everyday thing. It's not like, hey, pick up a pencil and draw this. It's like, what what, what do you mean baking? What do you mean baking, right? Like, I, I get it. I get you. I get you. But then once you get it, you get it. You get it. That feels good. <laughs> this thumb looks kind of Dr. Seuss like. Baking is your checkpoint at this moment? Like you're kind of, what, like stuck on it? Trying to figure it out in your learning process? what's baking i mean yeah no no so like baking really it's just taking details right if we're talking about normal map baking you're just taking details let's say you wanted all of this to go onto a clean lower mesh it's projecting what you see here down onto a uv map making it a 2d map that you can apply to a low res mesh to trick the like tell the computer to like basically trick the lighting right it's basically telling where the lighting is going to bounce artificially um with a normal instead of like the geometry itself dictating that you're taking a snapshot of your model putting it onto a 2d surface to then like what's the best way that i can do this i need a piece of paper no i want to i need to explain the paper paper time A 
Okay. So let's say this is your low res sculpt. And this is your high res sculpt. So you've got all of this detail here and you wanted to put it onto this. You're like, oh my God, look at all this detail. I want it to go onto this one because it's so much cleaner and like energy efficient because it doesn't have a lot of topology. Well, what you would do is you would bake. So first, right? First, you would UV this. You would UV it, so you'd create a seam and then unwrap it. So when you unwrap this, now you have this 2D shape, right? You have this 2D shape. Now, now, you will bake. So you take all of this detail and it projects it onto this 2D shape. This 2D shape, now, you wrap that around here, and suddenly it has all of the detail from the higher res mesh. So baking is in a very, very simplistic way. <laughs> and time to become a baker, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's literally just taking, see all of these things, just project it down, essentially. It's taking all of this information right here, that would be geometry information, turning it into 2D information that can be read to create a sense of light bouncing in different directions. With you, whenever you look at a normal map, all the different colors, basically it's saying to the computer, hey, the light should be bouncing in either X, Y, or Z. That's what it is. It has nothing to do with food, nothing at all. So array is spawned, sample count, times per each texel of the target object, both inward and outward, usually, and if it hits the source object and doesn't die below a threshold, you can specific you can specify it samples the source object texture at that point. Yeah, so I mean like you can you can literally talk about it as technically as you want to. And at this point, I will understand what you're saying. However, when you're first like right out the gate trying to explain it to somebody, um, especially if you're like me and your your eyeballs do this and your brain also does this and then every other sense does this while somebody's trying to explain something to you um, in detail, then you kind of need the, uh, the candle and the piece of paper explanation just to get you into the gate of understanding. So that's, yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh. 
Oh, I've got back mace on too. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking of doing like something maybe more like centauri. Why not, right? Which the anatomy will be kind of weird considering it already has a pelvis here. Let's see if we can figure this out. So, like, what? It would have two rib cages. Maybe I won't do a pel like I won't do like a pelvis right there. annoying song oh my god and now we're just birds chirping all right whatever that's fine take the birds chirping over whatever that was Got a badonk donk right now. <laughs> Very strange looking one. <laughs> yeah, no mood board or anything. Just going with the flow, Muhammad. It's usually the way it is on this stream. We're just kind of having fun. Hey King, yeah, um, when you're working initially, just blocking out gesture and everything, you don't need a whole bunch of detail. In fact, I recommend you don't use a bunch of geometry right off the bat. It makes it easier to move things around. And make sure that you're getting a good foundation. We need like another kind of like chest area down here. This needs a whole other back area. Mm. 
And you know what? I'm thinking this needs to be bigger. Avatar? Really? The big squiggle. <laughs> it's a big old squiggle. I think I need to make the uh the head a little bit bigger. It's just a big squiggle. From Halo, I would uh is it just the uh this thing that's going on? Like the headdress? I like an elite. Get rid of dynam dynamic. Actually, no, no, no. I'm gonna turn dynamic back on, and I'm just gonna make all of this smaller. Okay, I'm also gonna go into T pose.
And this is usually how I fix like gesture issues that I might be having. Kind of create something um, that works a little bit better. So I'll just like throw it into uh, T Pose Master. And I don't really care about like how messy things get because it's you know when you're working gesturally it really doesn't matter. Sometimes I will get quiet because I'm, you know, like you, it might not seem like it, but using design brain um, kind of takes, takes some focus. Just to kind of like fix some things, sometimes I'll get a little bit quiet. Um, okay, and then you can just kind of go into this and T-Pose to Sub-D and all your fixes are back into Sub-Tools. You know what? I should probably save this because I haven't saved at all. Hold up. Let me save and then I'll look at chat. Do... 168. Alright. Alright, let's see. Uh, 
Thanks, Hedgy. Curious to see what its movement looks like. Yeah, it would be very like, woo, snake up top and horsey at the bottom. Yeah, it might be aliens a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you're talking about. It's the little hands, I think. <laughs> hey, what's up, Luke? How are you doing? So many phases where I don't talk because nobody asks anything, so you just sculpt. Yeah, I know, that's fair. I, I like, I usually just stop. <laughs> I just stop and I just start talking about random nonsense. I don't know. Balancing act, you know? Balancing act. Okay, I want... What if... Wait, no, no, no. Yeah. What if... Centipede. What if centipede as well? Where's my centipede fans at? Centipede? Maybe? I think so. <laughs> there we go. What else? what I was saying. Oh, also, yeah, sorry. Shout out. Um, Luke Luke is another uh, artist on this channel. If you want to go and see, he's doing uh, really good likeness sculpts right now. He was... Was it yesterday? I think it was. Time is just... Time is a construct, and I am, I am a blob. So go and check out Luke <laughs> on this channel. I think it was yesterday that he streamed. It was a really, really good likeness sculpt, and his other streams that he does as well are really, really awesome, uh, and you should definitely check it out. And I'm sorry I'm stuttering. I am struggling to hold on to the thought that I was just having. Ah. No need to thank me. Honestly, people would probably do better to watch you than me. You do things clean and proper. <laughs> Going to the Zebra Summit this year? Dude, I'm not... I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll see how, uh, how COVID's looking and stuff. We'll see how that, that's looking by the time that the Zebra Summit comes around. But, um, I want to. If they're having it in person, I want to. I just have no idea if it's going to be a thing that I can do. More, more, more everything. More, more. What is that? Like the Game Grumps gif? More. <laughs> uh. Yeah, no. Monty would not be good with the crowd. He would be full whale-eyed and shivering. He would not do well in a crowd. I would not be bringing Monty to the summit. He is not good with that. He's not good with people. No, oh, sir. Yeah. 
I do, I do want to go to the summit though, but also not a fan of the idea of getting COVID. When I was, um, when I was younger, I had uh, rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis. These are both like autoimmune disorders, diseases rather. And it's in remission, but, you know, the idea of getting COVID to me is like, you're kind of gambling with the idea of getting that out of remission and maybe something else popping up, considering the, the data that has been coming out for people with, who are like immunocompromised. Not saying I am, but there is that possibility as well, so I just would rather not risk it if I can. It's a personal thing. But it's like, you know, maybe if I got it, I would be fine, right? But it's also... I know there's like a lot of artists too who are like, you know, immunocompromised that... Like, you know, they, w they can't go to these events because other people are like, nah, you know what, I'm just like not going to wear a mask. So if there aren't like mask mandates, then I feel like extra, like... <laughs> just not one to gamble with my health like that, that's all. Or others, rather, for that for that matter. What's up, babies? Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no saying that it would be bad, right? There's no saying that for sure it would be bad. It could just be a cold, like, or feel like a cold, but... They also say that every person who gets it transmits it to, like, 10 or 12 people, right? So there's that, too. Dragon looks so sad. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry I've made you so sad. <laughs> yeah, it's that that's brutal in my opinion. Like, okay, if you don't wanna if you don't believe that it exists, like fine, but don't start like don't just at least have respect for other people. Like if you wanna like look at it in a belief sense, okay? If you want to look at it in like, oh, everything is just what you believe to be true. We're not going to talk about science or facts or fi whatever. If you want to just talk about a beliefs, respect other people's beliefs then. That simple. Like if somebody, which this is a ridiculous thing because it's, it clearly exists, but if you want to believe that it doesn't exist, believe that it doesn't kill people, believe that it doesn't hurt anyone, then at least respect the people that do. <laughs> Crazy idea. Anyways, you guys can battle it out in the comments <laughs> about COVID. I'm gonna shut up about it now because um, there is definitely like a reality sort of, uh, like a rift in reality when it comes to talking about these things. There is definitely a breach in everybody's 
brain as to what is actually real. big neck lumpies big lumpies Paul Deasy? Whoa, no, am I Paul Deasy again? No, I no, I've got my title this time. Don't you know it's Paul Deasy today? What's my favorite reptile? Oh my god. I really like those um those spiky lizards that eat their own tail in defense. What are they called? Do you know what I'm talking about? They're spiky and they go Ouroboro. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. I appreciate it. Quick, back to Elden Ring. Yes. Yes, bury your head in the sand of the Erd Tree. <laughs> uh, wait, let me see. What are, um, spiky... Let me see if I can Google it. Spiky... Lizard... Eats tail. Oh yeah, what's it called? Armored tail eater. Really, that's it. Armadillo girdled lizard Ouroboro cataphractus. <laughs> there you go. That's my favorite. <laughs> Absolute mouthful, dude. It's the coolest freaking lizard though. It's like the it's the best. Here, I will show you. Best lizard. Best lizard. Look at this look at this little baby. Look at the baby. Look at him. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> They're the best. They're the coolest, dude. Oh yeah, the ones that shoot blood from the, their eyes, or the ones that like shoot like um, um, this like acid spray from their butthole. That one, that one's cool too. I like the butthole spray. Krill neck is awesome. I feel like they're they've been forgotten since Jurassic Park hasn't been featuring those dinosaurs lately. Krill necks. Real necks are definitely definitely up there. Classic favorite. Classic favorite, yes.
Really boy in the new Jurassic World trailer? Was there? For real? I mean, I'm just I'm just psyched that they have dinosaurs with feathers now. So that that's cool. I love how um on Twitter the uh the paleo like all of paleo Twitter gets like up in arms anytime there's something to do with Jurassic Park mentioned. Everybody's just like You think that this is realistic? Like <laughs> And then, and then I think recently there was some kind of a pretty realistic, um, very scientific based documentary thing that came out about dinosaurs and everybody was like super happy about it. <laughs> That's all I remember from Twitter recently is just people either getting angry about dinosaurs or really happy about dinosaurs. That's all I've really been seeing. <laughs> want to even do like this. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it actually. Some big paws, boy. Uh, what was it called? It's a prehistoric planet. That's the thing that they were all like up in arms about, or no, that's what they were all really happy about. Prehistoric planet. Okay, we got David Attenborough for it. Oh, that's what. Okay, I see. I see. I see. Wow, he's still doing stuff. That's okay. I'm actually. I don't know. I'd probably check that out. David Attenborough always wins me over with that uh, his David Attenborough-ness. Just being David Attenborough. That voice. I feel like I was like raised by David Attenborough, to be honest. Like, just the amount of... I had like the 
my parents had like that entire collection of the BBC um, nature like documentaries or whatever and like if I ever had to be babysat that's I would just be watching that like back to back to back to back to back to back just BBC documentary <laughs> possible to merge sub tools into a single thing or do you just make hundreds of sub tools yeah you can merge all your sub tools into one sub tool if you want to um there's a merge option right there you can merge visible so everything becomes one or you can just like merge down um so you just like push things around in here and then merge them uh merge similar is like anything that has the same amount of topology similar parts it'll merge it Hey, where's the claw that I did? Okay. Where's that? Ooh, ooh, ooh.
Alright, see you, Luke. You're probably gone by now already, though. But, see ya. Thanks for stopping by! If you're still here. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> um... What's AccuCurve do? Just make it thin when you pull it. No, it just brings everything to a point. So if you're pulling anything, right? You use the AccuCurve, you see how it goes to a point. If I turn that off, it's a big blob. Turn it back on, the point. I stream once a week, John. Uh, 6 to 10 p.m. EST right here on this channel. You don't bother merging until you're ready to start projecting or something else forces your hand. Yeah, I agree. My him? Oh, was I humming? I'm sorry. Sorry. I do that sometimes. I'm not a very good um, hummer either, so... Apologize. Just one of those things that I do that helps the focus. Um, make a lot of noises a lot of the time just to help keep me focused. I did not mute. No muting. Good night, baby's first puke. Have a good night. It's 8 p.m. I should take a break. <laughs> and then I'll come back and shove Monty in your face. Does that sound okay? I'm gonna take like a two minute break. Um, ooh, don't like that. Your front looks ugly! I need to fix her. I need to fix the front. Whatever. Do that when I come back. Uh, I should save actually. How am I saving? <laughs> mm. BRB. Okay, I'll be back in just a second or two minutes, okay? Be back.
All right. There we go. Now I'm back. Now we have a Monty. Monty that wants wants to be hugged. <laughs> Big old chunky bear is here to say hi. He's a good boy. Are you camera shy today? Huh? Are you camera shy today? <laughs> you have such sass right now. There we go. Big boy. He's so heavy. He's actually, he's so solid. He lo doesn't look big, but he is solid. He is just a, like, a flower sack. He's almost 40 pounds. He's not even fat, but he's almost 40 pounds and he's this big. Just <sighs> absolute solid. Solid, solid dog. He's not he's not even fat though. Does have the when you when you tap his tummy it goes do 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 not calling you fat, I'm sorry. I promise I'm not calling you fat. You're solid. You're a big giga chad dog. Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Kisses, kisses, kisses. Monty, come on, give me a kiss. Okay, fine. <laughs> Normally he kisses on command, but every time I'm on stream, he's like, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna show you how much I don't like you. <laughs> oh my god. Is he a corgi? Yeah, he is a corgi. His mom ran out of printer ink, though, so he doesn't have uh, any color on his face. No, none on his face. Okay. Face. Look at that squishy face. Loves that. You love it, don't you? Okay. Bye bye. Going onto the floor now. The noodle that he is. No, dude, he, he, even if you think that he would give grandkids, he wouldn't, okay? Even if he didn't have any of that, like, any part modification. <laughs> even if he wasn't modified. Um, he has, he's like asexual or something. Like, he doesn't, he has never once, like, even before when he had his stuff, he never ever had any interest like that. He was, he was never involved in the hump -a doodles That is sweet. Arizona iced tea, damn. Wah. Alright. So you heard of a BRB. You guys never tell me that it's still there. Shame on you. It's all your fault. Okie dokie. Oh gee, thanks Nathan. 
sure looking out for me there, buddy. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. More arms. More. More! More! You know what? I think we should dynamash this. Mm -hmm. Dynamash, you say? Oops. I'm gonna cancel it out. Thank you. Uh, Bunkay? Hey, what's up, Link? How's it going? Thank you, sir. Thank you.
You're doing good. That's awesome, Link. That was good. Your latest drawing that you uh, showed on Discord, that was really good. You should be proud of yourself. You've been improving a lot. Alright, I'll see you, Pepe. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you have a good uh, render sesh. Yes, reference is always key to improvement. You want to improve, you reference. It's just how it is.
the Halo series. Nah, 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 no, 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 I can't, I can't get over it. I, uh, yeah, it's not for me. I am not the target audience for that, for sure. Personal project, something more game, something else, just for funsies. We're just doing a sculpt on stream, just having as much fun as we can with it. Getting crazy. So I guess that's in the realm of personal project, yeah. We're just sketching, really. That's what this is. Yeah, if you... Yeah, uh, that's... That's my point exactly if you really like halo and you're kind of a lore whore as i like to call it um yeah that, that the show's not gonna do it for you <laughs> like, it doesn't it doesn't feel right i i kind of am wondering at this point if it's even possible to accurately practically portray a Spartan without uh, VFX because of how like tanky and crazy their armor really is and how much of like lore accurate Spartans like they're just absolute beasts dude and I'm just wondering like if practically that's even something you can do without it looking like uh, like a cosplay or something like that you know Like the thing the thing to me, right, is I think a lot of people need to get over this idea that video games in themselves are not good storytelling tools. Like there's this weird like notion that if it's film, it's like higher brow storytelling, but I don't think that's like that should not be that should not be it. That should not be the case. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, she wrecked. Dude, like, <laughs> even just like the way that they move, right? You can immediately tell if something looks like the armor is too light. And as much as like the Spartans are augmented, I feel like there would still be some sort of a resistance that you can see. I don't know. If I were if I were art directing something like that, I would uh I would definitely like I mean, maybe maybe this is not exactly the greatest thing, but I would like weigh down the suits or something, like put weights in the armor. I don't know. <laughs> it would be really hard to do take after take wearing that though. Right, but Rogue, that's what I'm saying, is just like if you have it in a video game world, then I feel like it doesn't end up feeling fake. Um, it's just when everything around it is so incredibly grounded that it kind of takes you out of it. You need a proper, I think you need just like a proper introduction. Like let's say you were to do a practical effects, or a VFX specifically. So let's say the Spartan was VFX. Um, lore accurate. Because it would look absolutely ridiculous uh, if you really saw it just all of a sudden out of nowhere. I feel like 
you know, like what if what if the show went from Spartan training program, like aka when Chief was like 16 and killed an ODST by punching him with his bare hands kind of deal. Like literally sent him vaulting across the stadium that they were fighting in with one punch. Like that's some like anime level like stupidity, like how augmented these dudes are, right? He he like cold blooded killed an ODST just by punching him in the face when he was 16. And it's just like, if you had that sort of a thing, and then you started suiting them up as time went on, I feel like it would be more like you could actually get into it. And then when it comes to like the fight scenes, don't, I feel like, don't be afraid to go a little bit crazy with it too. Like, don't, don't hold back. Like, let the Spartans be fucking nuts. Um, Kelly, Kelly took a warthog, I think at one, or not a warthog, um, a mongoose. <laughs> she picked up a mongoose and started using it as a bat against an elite, okay? Like, that was like a thing. That's a thing. That's a lore accurate thing that these Spartan 2s do, okay? <laughs> so, I feel like having that portrayed would, it, like, you know, starting from like a really like early unsuited you don't necessarily need to see Chief's face either, but just having like that same air that uh, even like the Halo 4 Spartan program or the Halo 4, um, how they did it in Halo 4 as well. Like just like the, uh, the initial kind of setup to all of that. I feel like it would it would help a lot <laughs> and then just go go anime with the fights man i don't like oh no no we have to have it so like realistic that everything almost feels like slow it's almost like the the fights were like mo but then like not touched up enough because when you mo things right mo fights you usually have to have animators come in and speed it up because mocap fights just feel so slow and sluggish in real life when they're captured that animators are needed to come on and amp that up, like juice it up, right? To make it look cool. So I feel like if that's the case, why not just let the animators go at it, you know? Like just let them, let them go, man. Like bring on some of like the like use the games as inspiration and then just like juice it up like why not you have full range of vfx at your your disposal now but for some reason it's like oh no no, no that's not something that most people would like what do you mean most people won't like that i feel like people would love that i i would be like oh hell yeah spartans punching the shit out of each other let's go dude that's something um that, that was like a missed opportunity with Halo 5 too, I find, is just that whole hunting thing as like stupid as that was. If they had at least had Chief and Locke, like, lore accurate fight, I would- <laughs> That would have been dope. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Sorry. The nerd is coming out. I told you guys, I love Halo. I do love Halo. I don't want acid green dragon. Yeah, and you know what's nuts is they're like, oh, we didn't reference the games, we referenced the books, like, as 
as if the books weren't supplemental to the games to begin with. Like, that's just psychotic. That's psychotic to me. Like, what, what are you guys huffing? I don't know. I feel like there was definitely um, some production issues. <laughs> definitely. Especially since it took them that long to get it out there. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, treating it like it's its own thing is good. It's just hard for me to disconnect when you literally have Master Chief 117 wearing his suit design, you know? Like, everything is just there. It's like, hello! And then you literally got... Okay, <laughs> another thing that I just don't... I don't get, okay? I'm sorry, I have to say this. Cortana not being blue is really weird. I don't know if they changed it. I don't think they did. Cortana not being blue is weird. And they're like, no, but it's got to be more grounded. And like, why Why is being blue not grounded? Why is that being not grounded? I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> but you can keep the alien testicle chin things. You can keep the testicles on the prophets. You can keep the testicles on the prophets, but you can't make Cortana blue. And I think that that's like... Like, so you were looking at the games, right? Like, they were looking at the games. Clearly, if the testicles on the Prophets is still, <laughs> are still there. But Cortana is in blue, so like, I just don't, I don't, I don't really get what was going on. I don't, I don't see it. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the books, the books were, like, oof, intense Spartan stuff, but, uh, they could have at least looked at, looked at the games. <laughs> but yeah, if you treat it like it's its own thing, I'm sure it's probably totally good, or if you're not, like, obsessed with Halo to an unhealthy degree like I am, then, like, it's probably good, too. I'm just being hypercritical because, uh, I'm a toxic fan. <laughs> Wait, are you- they're not- like, it's not- Rionin, uh, no, I'm talking about- we're talking about- <laughs> oh, oh, you're capping. sorry, my bad, I didn't see- <laughs> Any gatekeepers? <laughs> I'm here to gatekeep <laughs> Halo from all you guys. <laughs> uh... No, if you like the show, kudos to you, but it is super not for me. I have criticisms, for what I've seen anyways. I'll be fair and I'll say that I haven't like given the show a full chance, just cause like, I don't see a point from what I've seen. And you know what, maybe that's not fair, right? Like maybe I do need to watch it, but even, even Pablo Shire's voice, like he's fine. Pablo Shire's cool and everything for himself. I just, like, I can't get over the voice. Like, couldn't they have done something to his voice while he was at least, like, wearing the suit, you know, to make it sound like he's not behind a cardboard box talking? That's me, personally. Personally. I'm being hypercritical, okay? Hypercritical. Maybe that's not fair. I don't know. Just what I feel. Cause like I get they didn't want to like bring on Steve Downs, like I get that, but like I guess like actors probably have their own contracts too, like you know how long they have to have screen time within a show or whatever, like they probably have all that, like oh I have to, like my face has to be seen, if you want me to be in this then you have to show my face, and like I'm sure there's like all of this like complication, so.
Yeah. Yeah, I just have like a very strong idea of what Halo is supposed to be in my own head. And so like when I see them doing what they're doing, it's hard for me to be malleable in liking it. And that's my own thing. Like. No, I don't like the Covenant human thing at all. No. Not a fan. So I ha I, I think the whole reason though that they do like the Covenant human thing, right, is like this sort of idea that if somebody's gonna be watching a TV show, they need to see a human face to connect with it in somehow. Um, like this idea that, oh, if we introduce an alien species, then people won't have any ability to emotionally connect with the alien story, so we need the human aspect of it so people can connect to it. I'd be like, okay, that's kind of true, but then explain Arbiter to me. Explain why he's so beloved. <laughs> like... I feel like you can do it. You can. It's just sort of like this cop out. Like, oh, we need like check marks in order to make this work. Like, it, I don't think that that's necessary. And it bugs me. It bugs me so much that people are just like almost like making shows either off of like ideas of what they think people want to see or making shows based off of like data sets of what they believe people are going to look at the most. Because if you look at like what Netflix is using for even like their front page, they gather data on like how long you spend like hovering over certain thumbnails or whatever and show each person, you know, each account, different thumbnails for each thing depending on what type of person they fall into in terms of the data set and what they like to see. So I feel like if you're making shows with like that, in your head or hiring somebody with that in the back of their head it's like okay <laughs> you know like if you want human connection you're completely removing it from the equation by doing that so yeah weird right Um, okay, what am I doing? Am I born to be a FromSoft monster sculptor? <laughs> I take that as a compliment. Thank you. Oh, we were talking about the Halo show, the new Halo show. 
Microsoft Sam wasn't brought into voice. Yo, yes, right? Oh my god. And then imagine it just cuts away to uh to the dolls or the figures again. My Rothel Cocker goes swish 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 swish. That also ignores a long history of commercial successes that barely show the monsters at all, like Jaws. Yeah, like, okay, yeah, I, like, you don't have to constantly have a lot of, um, a lot of, like, you know what, honestly, I, I actually completely agree with that. I, <laughs> I, I prefer, uh, even as, like, a creature sculptor, a monster sculptor, like, all of this, like, I actually really like shows horrors specifically horror shows that minimize the threat that like visually like so you don't you don't see what it is and it's more of a psychological thing and i find emotionally that has so much more impact because the second you see the monster the second you see it no matter how well done it is no matter how cool it is it's almost like the sigh of relief weirdly enough at least for me when i'm watching things it's like Okay, now I can see it. Now I know exactly what it is. Now I know what to expect. Like, you can still get them with, like, jump scares and things like that, but that whole, like, psychological aspect is kind of... It's kind of thrown away as soon as you show it. Um, which kind of, like, you know, it depends on, like, what kind of a horror you're going for and everything like that, but I really like psychological horrors um, that really play on that specifically, like, the unknown. Do, I ha do you think that I have improved over the years? Yes, I have definitely improved over the years. Um, you're sculpting every single day. I hope that I hope that you improve over the years. You know, things like, they don't seem obvious at first, but yeah, like, definitely feel like I have improved. You disagree? Fair. All right. Hurtful, but okay. <laughs> This actually kind of sounds like Halo 2, doesn't it? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit Halo 2 in there. A little... They do some of the unseen monster kind of stuff with the flood. Yeah, that would be really cool. That's another thing in the games that I'm just like, man, what happened? When the flood was introduced in CE, that was like, that was crazy. I don't know if you guys remember how nuts that was. Um, like when 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 you're just like walking through the uh, wa walking through the the swamp area, and then you just see like you just see this random thing jump off the cliff. <laughs> What the hell is that? Why are, like, the Covenant dead all around me, you know? Like, where did that go? I, I mean, I'm sure, like, that that all died with Bungie giving up Halo, right? To 343, but at the same time, I was like, damn, so many missed opportunities. I have so many ideas in my head of, like, what Halo is. <laughs> but I did really enjoy Infinite, regardless. Because I think, um... They really touched more upon like the uh, the overall uh, emotional aspect of it, I guess, like the the human aspect of it all in infinite. ODST was super great. Loved ODST. So bring back firefight, <laughs> please. <laughs> The sounds as you go down in that level were so creepy. Dude, yeah, and the fact that you just kind of kept going down, you were like... Mm. <laughs> Halo is a prison be Yeah, exactly! Exactly! Like, what happened? What happened? So sad. I feel like... 
I feel like so many people had different ideas of what Halo was, right? And I think I think now too, people are very split on what each character really represents, what they're for and everything. I have my own ideas of of what Halo is, but yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. What? What? I'm sorry. I missed. What? Was I asking something? Was I asking if you wanted to? Wait, what? Yes, please. What? In confusion. More firefight. Yes, 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 firefight. I agree. I agree. It's so weird, like, again, like, when it comes to, like, multiplayer things, too, like, everybody has, like, their own idea of, like, no, like, you know, what's trendy? What, what does the data say will get us the most money for multiplayer? It's like, have you considered just making it fun? <laughs> more microtransactions. Thank you. I, we needed that. I needed more microtransactions. I love microtransactions. <laughs> you know what I love even more? Play to earn. Why don't we just play to earn? That's sarcasm, by the way. I'm just being very, very sarcastic right now. Stream sarcasm alert. Thank you. 
<laughs> needs braces for sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, or I could just like you know get me get me Sylphy, uh one of those. What were they like the the stream boards? And then I'll just every time it's, it's a sarcasm hour. Ow. Every time it's sarcasm hour, I'll just click a button. Firefight with the absolute combat sandbox that Infinite provides would be so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I hate that, like, everything is kind of, like, shoehorned into... Oh, I'm sorry, you don't like deathmatch? Only deathmatch and capture the flag? Uh, well, no, I'm gonna have to. Oh, actually, <laughs> you know what you can try? Is, like, grabbing these seeds. Just grab and throw the seeds. Oh, I'm sorry, did you do that like a hundred times already? Why don't you grab and throw the seeds some more? Oh my god, it's so much fun! Uh -huh. Dude, I, like, go back to the Halo 3 days. I know the lobbies were toxic. I know. I know the lobbies were toxic. Go back to Halo 3. Regress. 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 And you know what I am watching right now? Also, no spoilers, no spoilers, please no spoilers. If you are, if you're like already totally caught up in everything, don't spoil it. I swear to God, I'm going to ban you so hard if you do. Um, I'm watching AOT, Back on Titan. I am on season three. Only at the very beginning of season three, though. Like halfway through, like the first arc. Very good. Very happy girl. Very good show. 
I finish or get tired of the assassin that I'm working on, maybe I'll do Titan. <laughs> the card. Is that a... What's it called? This? What's that called again? Uh, that's why I hate my brain, dude. Star Trek. Yeah, it's Star Trek. Okay, yes. Booking <laughs> greeting. Live long and prosper. Is on there. Alright, well, I hope you feel better, Leonard. Thank you so much for hanging out. Have a great evening. 
as much as your back will allow you. I don't know very much about Star Trek, other than uh, there are some fuzzy things that can kill by suffocation. There are just there's a lot of like I, morphs or something morphs mm, orps. I don't know. There are these fuzzy things, and they kill by being fuzzy and suffocating. I am Captain John Picard, USSS, SSS, S, SSS, Enterprise. Ugh, monsters. Monsters wearing them boots with the fur, them apple bottom jeans. Let's see here. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Stop being silly. Do something. Okay. Yes, sir. We'll do. What kind of creature is this? An ornamental one that would not actually exist. When is my Pokemon game coming out? Can you imagine? Yeah, it does kind of have that uh, that Chinese dragon feel. I really like Chinese dragons. They're super cool. 
it's one of those things i think um when i was younger i didn't really like get the idea of a chinese dragon that very that much only until like college where i was just like oh you know what actually chinese dragons are pretty dope <laughs> I was like a little kid, my favorite dragons were like Weaverns. Like the and, and like the type of uh dragon things that like the Nazgul's would ride. But yeah, Chinese dragons are dope as hell. But they're more refined. <laughs> refined elegance. Hey man, to each their own. I like both. I think there's a time and place for, um, for both. Yo, I'm ready to start something. I'm ready to start some some anger in the chat. I don't like Zelda. <laughs> ready to start something. You respect people who like it, but I get bored by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ready to fight? <laughs> Breath of the Wild made it was boring to me. Let's fight. Let's go. Breath of the Wild sucked in my opinion. Let's go. <laughs> Eric, I knew you would come in here. I knew. The second I said that, you'd be like, no, I got to get keyboard warrior time. You're allowed to not like it. I'm allowed to not. I I don't think that. I don't know. I don't think that Breath of the Wild is very good. I can understand people not liking Halo. Sci-fi stories are not exactly everybody's thing. Plus, uh, the franchise is very confused. It is it is kind of all over the place. Um, and that's okay. That's okay if you don't like Halo because uh, there's reasons not to. Um, Zelda on the other. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I love triggering. I love triggering chat. It's, uh, it's a good pastime. Chat's too quiet? Just say you like a really popular game. Or you don't like a really popular game and then all of a sudden, oh my god! <laughs> Ocarina of Time? Okay, all, to be fair, Ocar was it Ocarina of Time? No, it was Twilight Princess, right? Is the one that I got through. No, it was the Ocarina of Time, wasn't it? Eric, which one did I play? Which one did you force me to play? 
can't remember. It's the one where you look at the moon. Majora's Mask. Okay, I liked Majora's Mask, but I was also kind of like girding my teeth to get through it because I was kind of bored. <laughs> so like, I liked it, but like in like a way where I was just like, I was like forcing to get through. That's why, like, the people who are saying, oh my god, um, Elden Ring is so much like <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild, I'm just, no. No, I can, I can focus on Elden Ring, I don't know about Breath of the Wild. Like, this nonsense of your weapons breaking every two seconds and just, no. Nah. The timer, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Simpsons theme song on the flute, <laughs> the Ocarina of Time, what the hell? <laughs> did you just, Eric, did you just link, like, list all of them? You just listed all of them, didn't you? Is that all of them? I don't know. They have terrible blacksmiths. <laughs> True. Uh. This is a frequent thing Eric and I argue about. Is uh. <laughs> is um. Zelda being a good and entertaining and engaging game. Okay, I don't- okay, 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 you wanna fight? You wanna go? <laughs> Alright, mage. So, I loved Pokemon when I was younger, but all of the new games lack soul, and I just cannot stand them. I cannot, I cannot, cannot sit there and focus on playing them anymore. I can't do it. I feel like I'm not the audience anymore. Which one did I like last? Uh, which generation? Um, the first time Mega Le Mega Evolutions were introduced, whichever one that was. It's like the Paris, Paris one. I don't remember what that was called though. X and Y maybe. But I didn't play Black and White. I think that was before that. Don't think I played black and or diamond. Whoa, dude! I don't know. There's just so many. I think one of my favorites besides Gen Three. Um, I really like Gen Three. Like Emerald version was amazing. But then I also really, really liked Fire Red. Like I really liked Fire Red. I liked that you could do like the world almost felt like it opened up so much in Fire Red. I thoroughly enjoyed that. But I don't know, any of like the, the new stuff, like even the Mega Evolution to me was kind of like iffy. Like I was like, eh. But like that's the last time I remember enjoying Pokemon games. Thanks, Chris. Is that what you're looking for? I don't think corgis are cute. Yo, okay, why you gotta think why you gotta be so personal about it? Well, that's not very nice. I'm talking about video games. You're talking about my dog. I, like, 
<laughs> Why you gotta go for the personal jab, man? My son. Don't tell me my son isn't cute. Bro. Just because I don't like your video game. <laughs> Have you played the new one? Ar Arceus Legends? It's incomplete, but I like the good track. Oh, no, I haven't. I have not. <laughs> chat's, chat's wilding because I went trigger happy, okay? I pulled the gun a couple times. I had to say some stuff. I had to say some stuff, man. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Mikey's? <laughs> I no, 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 no. I mean, if he were if he were not a tricolored corgi, then maybe it would make sense. But I think that that's one of the more popular corgi names. I mean, probably so is Monty, but it's funny because like <laughs> I named him Monty because of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I wanted to name him after the uh, the rabbit of I can't even say it. But then that would have been weird and hard to say for a lot of people, so I didn't name him that and I just named him Monty. See, 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 you have a corgi. Oh my gosh. How could you say these things and you have a corgi? How? How could you do that? They're literally the, like, most dramatic, lazy, but also extremely hyper at times. Like, they're just personified silly. Love them. I mean, my, mine's like socially dumb though, like he's not- he's never been good at socializing and that's what it is, but he's my little socially awkward dumb dumb. Rubbishy, rubbishimo, rubbish, ra. I keep spitting on my Cintiq. I'm disgusting. I'm like a hag woman. <laughs> Thanks, Mikey's. You're awesome, awesome too. I don't know why I went, like, full cartoon anime there. <laughs> wow! Thanks! Let's go catch some Pokemon! Or wait, how do they say it? Pokemon! <laughs> how did the Xenomorph turn out? Didn't. It did not. It didn't. I... I, um, switched, um, uh, I just, uh, I don't know, I just stopped, I just didn't. I suck, and you're allowed to be mad at me, because I just didn't. <laughs> <sighs> I have a focus problem. Sorry. Do-do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> Do 
Well, sleep deprived, I won't be able to help you with that one because this is ZBrush. Not the kitchen appliance. You need a xenomorph with a predator's body. Yeah, don't they have like alien v predator and then they have like some like um like mashup? What inspired this creature design? Literally nothing. Just like mashed some stuff around and came up with this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your doc, <laughs> doc definitely understands what you're saying, 100%. Uh huh. <laughs> this or my sprigat sprigatito? Um, probably this thing. Probably this thing. The the sprig sprigatito sprigato sprigat sprig. Yep. I'd say this thing, just because I like it a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Well, Mr. Nice Guy, I'm gonna call you Mr. Not Nice Guy. How's that? Huh? Mr. Not Nice Guy, because you're clearly being not nice. Mr. Mean Guy. Yeah, how's that? Huh? How's that? You're kind of a mean guy. How about Mr. Wrong Guy? Yeah. Yeah, now we're now we're getting there. Now we're getting somewhere. Mr. Wrong guy. That's right. Wrong. Mr. Wrong guy. <laughs> Got him. Jimmy. More like Chimney, because you're blowing smoke up your own. I don't. Got him! <laughs> Snake Hook Brush made Zebrush what it is today. I agree. Snake Hook Brush is uh, the founder, it's a uh, foundational. And if you don't use it, uh, I pity the fool. True, master, true, true. It is the ultimate tool. Only truth in chat right now.
Why would you delete snake hook from ZBrush? Why? What is the purpose? What are you trying to prove? Who are you trying to prove it to? What kind of pain do you wish to subjugate yourself to? True. True, Pixel. It's the true. So oh, true. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but can you make them drink? You can lead their hand to the B S. The B S scroll little bit snake hook tool, but can you make them pull things with it? It's a, it's a tough question. It's a tough thing to. First step is acceptance. That may be your way. Maybe there's something better. Maybe. It's within your power to grab and use. Yes! Try it! Oh my god, Massa, try it. Like, I'm, I'm serious. I think I want to do a challenge with the other streamers where we all just use masking and snake hook and that's it. Oi, oi, oi. Hand, hello. No. No. May I introduce to you only Snake Hook? <laughs> Snake Hook is also the detail brush. What are you talking about? What are you. I want this challenge to happen so I can brew. <laughs> Sculpture looks like your landlord. Do you live in like Elden Ring or something on like a plot of land? Like. Near like an Evergoal or an Everjail or whatever the free they're called. Like what? <laughs> What's your where you live? <laughs> Very weird. Yes, flesh curtains. Mask only. Mask tool only? Okay, well then how do you move things? Just mask? Can I use the transpose at least? Because if, you, if you're telling me I can mask and use transpose with no brushes, I can do it. I can do it. I'll do it. <laughs> you deserve that, Mr. Not Nice Guy. Only mask. Okay, but if you have no no way of doing anything, 
you know like if you're only masking then you're just can like paint on like a sphere or something i mean doable sure you can you could paint with only a mask but how we were sculpting Together, we will devour the very gods. Together, <laughs> Gather. yeah, yes, stop. I'm sorry. I am so annoying. I am so sorry. Oh, Gather. <laughs> Sculpt challenge. Use only your weak hand. That I can't do. That. Wait, we have we have just a few more minutes left. Let me see. Big hands. No, I can't. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 if I lost my hand, my career would be over. If that would be it, we'd be done. Melania fight? I clapped her cheeks, dude! <laughs> I don't know, it's not that bad. I, I feel like I think the the thing is like everybody getting scared with Melania is just like panic rolling. Like if you see her jump into the air, back, back, in, back. Right? Like it's not it's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> Yo, I had an S stock in a dream, dude. I was doing the game with an S stock in a dream, baby. The the fire giant was pretty rough. Just like getting close to it, because like again, I had, a, I, had a, I had a fire poker. <laughs> getting close to this fire giant for me was like he uh one of the one of the one of the rounds I had with him, he like glitched out and he wouldn't stop rolling and I was like death by butt cheeks in my face. Like I suffocated in his butthole. Like it was just, it was just roll, 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 roll. Mm, it's cool gameplay, dude.
I actually find it interesting because like with Melania, people are like, oh, you should just summon your mimic and have the mimic do the work for you. But I tried that, right? I tried one of them because she heals my mimic anytime I would summon it. It would literally just stand there and he like just feed her any damage I would do to her. It would just like feed her back. So I was like, okay, okay, I just want to do that. Stupid mimic. <laughs> no mimic for me. I'm gonna feed her. The mimic worked before the new patch. Gotcha. Yeah, it like it like feeds her. I find it just stands there and feeds her. So. So, just use an S stock. Put some frost on your S stock. Break her defense. And roll and dodge and weave. It's a good strat. And she does the waterfowl move. The best thing to do is two times in, or two times out, one in, and then one out. Yo, yeah, it's that prisoner life, dude. I literally started with the S stock and I just ran with it. <laughs> Not gamer enough. No, you you were using you were using a uh, the bleed build though, and you just like, I think you were fighting Melania when you just didn't have enough health. Like that was another thing too. It was like you just didn't have enough health. Box actually boxing gloves challenge. What I'm supposed to sculpt with boxing gloves on? What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the pokey is really good on the S stock. I love that. Like it's you know when you're when you're when you just have an S stock in a dream too. You play. You don't play. Uh, like Elden Ring. You play Po-Souls. So the, the whole thing is to just run up to everything's toes and poke them and tickle their toes until they die. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking about getting a Cintiq. How to use the ergo mount or monitor arm. Um, I use the Amazon basic one actually with an extension piece that I bought like from a third par party seller. Anything ergo, works with the Amazon basic arm so you can save money by getting the Amazon basic arm and then like getting an extension piece for it that like from er uh like the ergo arms I don't hate you I honestly okay if you don't know me I'm very sarcastic I joke a lot nothing is serious I don't take anything serious unless I start a conversation by going okay I'm being serious right now like most of the things like dude life is a joke okay i am constantly joking everything is stupid everything sucks everything's dumb cosmic joke okay i don't care um i don't hate you i'm not gonna accept a boxing glove challenge what are you crazy why would i do that Um, okay, I did not dynamesh this part yet.
With the double click. Stop double click. I swoo. Okay. Thank you. I have to change that. Oh, I have to change that setting again. Double click distance is way too cool. Way too short. Yeah, you should. Get back in. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Do I want to do this? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. What do I want to do? Wait. Right. I'm going to make this really tiny. Should I, after stream, start a new Elden Ring playthrough? Or... I work on the assassins. Struggle. What should I do? New Elden Ring playthrough or more sculpting on the assassins? Hmm. Hi, Shane. What's up? I've been very controversial today. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, guys, if you don't know Shane, uh, you should know Shane. You probably know Shane. If you don't know Shane, go and know Shane. Uh, he is a good streamer, great streamer even, on this channel. And he talks really well about breaking up shapes and form and talk breaking things down to their simplest level. Um, and he's a cool guy. That has to too. <laughs> you ever look at somebody's sculpt and be like, wow, how do they do that? Or can you pretty much figure out what they did or how they did it? Um, so that's, that's okay. <laughs> when I read your comment, I immediately thought of that TikTok, like soundbite. It's just like, you ever look at somebody and wonder what's going through their head? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think I, I used to a lot right? The learning curve when it's like really steep. But yes, now, nowadays I can usually pinpoint what it is that they do. There's a few things that I run across here and there that I'm like, huh, I wonder, I wonder how they get that result. But it's usually like really different workflows. For example, somebody there, I can't, I keep forgetting his name. I am so sorry that he deserves the credit. I just can't remember his name right now is doing really cool stop motion ZBrush, um, Sculptress Pro, like stop motion things. And in that case, like I, I sometimes I'm just like, I just want to watch you work just to see exactly how you did that. I can assume I know what he's doing, but I don't know exactly. Right. So it's just like in those situations. Yeah. But if I'm just looking at a sculpt, I can more or less pick out and assume what it is that they do. Elden Ring playthrough, but you don't use the rolling goat Ash of War. Oh. That's just pain. How do I do neither? Why? Why? What the hell? Another Elden Ring playthrough. <laughs> well, maybe I should. Wait, do. You the assassins. Did I delete them? No, here. See, it's either another Elden Ring playthrough or continue this one. Eee! Which is also Elden Ring. Making my own character. Getting absolutely chest ripped by a black, <laughs> black knife assassin. Two hours? I've been going for four. Hey, no, that was early version. Either way, Miyazaki wins. 
true. It's true. Live stream, stream the sculpts? No, no, I would not. I would not because I've already been going for four hours. <laughs> the dummies. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Mage. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gonna get more of that juice out. I need. Actually, oh my god, it's ten. Here, let me, let me like. You know what? His face, yo, he kind of, he kind of's got some like Radon vibes. Okay, I'm obsessed with Elden Ring. If you can't tell. Together, we will devour the very. Oh! <laughs> hey, what's up? No copyright. We're about to end here. There we go. Wowie wow wow. Let me save that. Okay, I'm gonna call it. We are all gonna have a good night. Bella. <laughs> <laughs> um so if you have any questions or I missed your comment or was just an absolute freak during this stream and just didn't see what you were asking, you can ask me on any of my DMs, socials, they're right here on the side. Wee so if you need to contact me, they're all right here on any of the platforms. <laughs> um, and if you want to go and check out any of the other really amazing artists who have different workflows from me, so if I did not scratch your itch, good, I don't want to be scratching any of your itches, go take a shower and a Benadryl maybe, um, you should definitely go and check out the other artists because they have different workflows and they might like scratching itches. So yeah. What's my favorite weapon? Shane, I literally did the whole game with the starter S off. <laughs> I had an S-Doc and a dream, dude. S-Doc and a dream. Just put frost on that bad boy and, and like, cold poke all the toes. Anyways. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Uh, follow... <laughs> follow ZBrush on all of their channels wherever you're watching because, again, like I said, a lot of other artists live almost every single day. Again, if you have any questions, right here all of my socials you can get them get get me talk to me ask me things whatever or don't that's fine too i don't care no <laughs> uh and then if you wanted a free trial for zbrush like let's say you actually liked what I, you saw was happening and you're like i want to do that i could do it better than her actually good good because there's a 30-day free trial and then if you never want like if you want like a free forever version that's super super easy to use and super stripped down it's just sculptures pro mode there is zbrush core mini as well so you can have that forever super free if you wanted to just try it okay anyways i will see you guys later have a good night see you in the next one peace bye awkward sign off Hey.